Adidas collaboration with Loughborough has really enabled us to enrich our knowledge in key areas and bring some of the most iconic products that Adidas has to market. We've also been able to develop our talent pipeline. So I'm one of eight PhD students who completed their PhDs at Loughborough who now work at Adidas. Loughborough and Adidas have been continually collaborating since 2002 and we encourage multidisciplinary teams and we've been working across projects aimed at making sports safer and more accessible so that people can perform at their best. Adidas has worked with Loughborough University to really understand how humans respond to hot or cold environmental conditions and that's been really key to driving some of our biggest product franchises like our Climate Cool range. Athletes' muscles can get cold in between their warm-up and their event, especially in track cycling, and that insight led to the Adidas hot pants, which helped Chris Hoy win gold at the London 2012 Olympics. For many women, participation in sport and exercise isn't that easy. Women come in all shapes and sizes, and bodies can change through different phases of life. By taking a fundamental look at how women's bodies move during dynamic exercise, we're trying to underpin essentially the, the measurement and the design that goes into support garments for women to make sport more accessible. Loughborough University research has impacted every major tournament football since the 2004 Rotario in Portugal and we're still working with Loughborough as we head towards 2026. The kick and robot here at Loughborough University has been replicated in our lab at Adidas and we routinely use it for all football and football boot development. Our work together led to a pattern on surface features to aid aerodynamic stability that was included for the first time in the 2010 World Cup ball. Our tomographic particle image velocimetry has really shone a light on the complex vortex shedding that takes place in the wake of a ball in flight. Our detailed analysis of the impacts that last only a few milliseconds has revealed how some of these materials behave under rapid loading. This has supported the development of football products that perform under massive global scrutiny. This expertise in understanding short duration collisions has been shared across other sports. For example, the new international standards that are now in place to govern cricket helmet performance are based upon Loughborough research. At Adidas, we believe that sport has the power to change lives, and that means taking sport to a wider and more diverse population. Our research with Loughborough University enables us to really understand the fundamentals of our products that will enable us to do that. We've also pioneered uh, lots of industrial placements with Adidas, as well as supporting lots of undergraduate and master's student projects alongside our PhD students. Our discussion will now turn to global trends in sports. As STEM enthusiasts ourselves, we're intrigued by the intersection of technology and sports. From your perspective, how do you envision emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence, biometrics, and virtual reality shaping the future of sports performance and equipment design? Yeah, um, I, I think you've highlighted some really, really interesting opportunities. Um, it, I, I, I'm always nervous about making predictions, um, so I'm so I'm not necessarily gonna gonna do that. But I um, I can certainly see um, opportunities for all of those um, you know technologies to 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 impact on sport. One of the one of the first reasons I say that is because um, sport is actually quite a, a viable. Um, experimental environment when you think about it so if you want to bring new technologies into um, into different industries um, you can understand in the medical industry or in the automotive industry or the aerospace industry um, you've got huge um, what we would call barriers to entry all the certification and the compliance and the and, and all of the um, guarantees that need to be made about the new technology and its safety and its and its worthiness and so on and that costs a lot of money and it takes a lot of time um sport often has much lower requirements so you know if you wanted to bring a new material onto a into a football boot you could pretty much do so tomorrow and you could get some real feedback from players. You could you could put it under under quite a lot of loading. I mean, the loading's different, but it but but actually, when you get a player running around and turning sharply and so on, there are certain 
loading conditions there that are quite that can be quite extreme and so you can get to learn about things quite quickly so i can see sport being um if i use this phrase a petri dish do you know what that means where you you know sort of an environment where you can do your science and see what happens um so i would see um sport being a petri dish for artificial intelligence for for vr and so on um if you look it's already happening in some respects so if you look at things like cycling um you know you can uh, enter bike races without leaving your own you know house or garage or whatever you can put your bike onto a onto a device and 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 connect through the internet to a set of other people doing the same things and you can immerse yourself in uh, a virtual race and 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 that's getting to a point where there's actually prize money on offer for that and there are genuine competitions being being run you know if you look at the reasons why that might be a good idea um the safety you know if you're falling off your bike you're not falling off the side of a road in 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 a in a, in a uh, you know mountainous environment and putting yourself in danger um, you don't have to close the roads to other traffic, so there's less inconvenience. You don't have to fly yourself halfway around the world to compete in a race, you know. And all those other benefits are, are, are pretty pretty strong. Um, there are some challenges about how you ensure that the data that's coming out of each person's bike is comparable if they're all using slightly different sensors and systems. But but I think they're there to be overcome. Um, so I think I think those sorts of virtual reality certainly to be able to to te to to train in more realistic environments um to to perhaps give uh athletes um an experience a better experience of what life will really be like in in the stadium or in the in in the noise and in the environment i i guess you'll never totally be able to replicate it but you can probably get closer than we had before um sports data is massive now there's there's so much data being generated through sport from both health perspectives but also competitive advantage perspectives anywhere there's large numbers of data um you you will probably find artificial intelligence following soon afterwards to try to um, make some sense of that um I, I think that i think the thing that i would flag there though it artificial intelligence is only really as good as the questions that it's being asked to solve and so I think, you know, pe some people are worried about the role, you know, the fact that it's going to take the human out of so much sport and it's not going to be quite the same as it was before. I, I think my, I, would, I wouldn't be quite so nervous about that because I still think the people who are asking the best questions, who are, you know, the, the human beings who are, who are exploring um, the best insights. Um, I like the word lateral. I like coming at problems laterally. So, you know, when the whole world is looking at a problem this way, what happens if you look at it this way? What happens if you look at it tangentially from 90 degrees? What do you see? Um, and often that leads to the sorts of questions that, that um, you know, artificial intelligence might well be able to um, to help with. Um, I, I guess the, perhaps the big question here is how do we use these tools responsibly? There will always be try people trying to win. Uh, and, and if they've got a lot of money, then then you run the risk of them um abusing the technology that's out there just to win some more so i think the way that sport is governed um and the way that uh, both nationally and internationally federations come together to preserve the integrity of sport because i i see no reason why these tools can't be used to um create a a, a more even playing field to make sure that um, people all around the world from all different backgrounds in all different environments climates um with different um sort of opportunities different level of opportunity to actually physically engage in sports um you know might well have the opportunity um to to to, to give different sports a chance um and then you hope that 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 talent will be spotted and and perhaps uh, you know i think at the very highest level i think sport will always be the way you know similar to the way it's played now i can't really see an olympic 100 meter final being done virtually i think that's always going to be the the in-person physical environment but but you hope that in future it's going to be more 
um, inclusive. It's going to be more equitable because anybody from any country in the world would have a fair chance of being there, uh, uh, which, if we're honest, I don't think is the case today. So the way in which we use these tools um, ethically, responsibly, um, to make sure that, that the whole world benefits, um, I think is probably the big challenge that we have coming up. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Harlan. I really do find it interesting how the lower barriers to entry and the less tight and restrictive regulations on introducing new technology in the sports industry actually makes it a really viable avenue to test out novel technology, which would spur like rapid innovation and make the sports industry definitely more advanced. And I do agree that AI definitely can't supplant the human aspect in sports technology as AI's capabilities are highly contingent on the direction that we humans want, wanted to explore. And as such, it is all the more important that this tool is guided in a direction to support equity and inclusivity.